For creating rows, care is needed. Only create rows for the aggregate and the exact subnets expected in the routing table. The slide shows some examples, and I will step through each of the examples to explain them. The first line shows the prefix 10.10 slash 16. It declares a max length of slash 24 and origin 65534. This means that the row covers 10.10 slash 16 and all subnets through to and including a slash 24. All these will be valid if they are originated from AS 65534, which means any subnet at all out of 10.10 slash 16 up to a slash 24 will be valid. The next line is for 10.10 slash 16, but here the max len is only slash 16. The row only covers this slash 16 and no subnets at all. It's only this slash 16 for origin AS 65534. If any subnet is announced, they will be invalid. The third line is for 10.10.4 slash 22. Max len is a slash 24 and origin AS 65534. This row covers the slash 22 through to the slash 24 subnets. Subnet sizes smaller than this will be invalid. 10.10.32.0 slash 22 is covered up to a max len of, of slash 24, but origin AS 64512. This is a valid row covering slash 22 through to 24 if the prefix announcements come from AS 64512. Notice that 10.10.32 slash 22 is a subnet of 10.10.00 slash 16. So as I was saying earlier, it's important to be a little bit careful about creating rows. Some operators have a temptation to create rows of the address prefix all the way down to the smallest subnet possible. This means that any subnet of that prefix being originated from the correct AS will be considered valid. There's absolutely nothing stopping another entity using the same AS to originate a smaller subnet of this prefix, causing a hijack or denial of service on the original address space. My advice is always to create rows for the aggregate and individual subnets being routed in BGP. No more and no less. So for example, if creating a row for 10.10 slash 16 and max prefix length is set to slash 16, the only valid row will be for 10.10 slash 16. If a subnet of 10.10 slash 16 is originated, it will be of state invalid. Avoid creating rows for subnets of an aggregate unless they're actually being actively routed. As I mentioned previously, if a row exists but subnet is not routed, it leaves an opportunity for someone else to misoriginate the subnet using the valid origin AS, resulting in a hijack. In fact, there's an IETF draft at time of this recording which discusses some of the issues and some of the care that is needed when creating rows. Looking at this internet draft, which is work in progress, some of the recommendations there include avoiding using max length attribute unless in special cases. Their advice also is to use minimal rows wherever possible. In other words, create a row only for the prefixes that are actually being announced. There's also discussion about rows for facilitating DDoS services. This is the case where a third party is providing DDoS services for the network operator. And this would mean that the third party is originating subnets, which are subject to DDoS, from their own autonomous system. There's even a strong suggestion by the authors that max length should be deprecated. Some entities were assigned address space by internic. This is prior to the existence of the regional internet registries. So how do we sign rows for these resources? Today, some registries will support the signing of legacy address space rows. 
Usually there needs to be documentation proving the holding, or if there is some service agreement for resources allocated by the registry. They will include historical resources within that service agreement as well, or by some other arrangement. I have listed on the slides two examples, APNIC's example and the RIPE NCC's example. Please check with your own registry region about how they will handle the ROA signing for legacy address space resources, as at the time of recording, the situation was in flux. Thank you.